Billy, you seem to have a lot of fun during the lockdown with your lad, having a bit of fun in the garden there. Yeah, the weather's certainly helping. Um, he's been out in the garden pestering me every day. Daddy, can we do this? Can we do that? And like I say, the, the weather's helping and um, it's nice to be out in the fresh air, um, spending good quality time with the kids, which that's been a nice thing, to be fair, to, to have that, you know, I've got the bond with them anyway, but I'm, you know, the 24-7 bond, which I'm sure anyone who's got kids is um, going through the same. Uh, but it's nice to do, you know, all the things that sometimes I don't get to do because I'm swatting off playing football. But no, to, to, to see him progressing in the garden um, has been one of the good things about the lockdown. He's, he's been at it, working on things every day. And he's really got the, the bug at the minute. And he, he, loves, he loves kicking the ball around in the garden, which uh, is great to see. Yeah, it seems like he takes after his dad as well. Well, no, he knows where the net is, but um, I can't do these free kicks that he's doing. Um, I started off with tapping him in from two yards with him, and uh, now he's curling them around mannequins and up and over the wall. And um, he's had a lot of fun with it, and um, he's coming out of all sorts of recreating goals. And it's been nice to see um, people inspired off him, and they're sharing their videos with, with us as well, which. Uh, his friends are giving him goals to score and he's giving them goals to score, which is, which is great. Um, unfortunately for me, he's not chose one of my goals yet. So, uh, <laughs> How's the homeschooling going? Are you any good at maths? Yeah, to be honest, I uh, never really liked maths. So my wife does that subject. Uh, she did the uh, maths and English with the oldest one this morning. I did um, something called sweaty socks with the younger one where he has to, work out items that I show him and put the, um, the starting letter of that item into the right sweaty socks, which obviously has a, um, a letter on each one. And he, he's, uh, he's done that this morning, which, is, is, which was nice as well. Like I say, I don't usually get to do things like that because they're usually doing them at school or I'm uh, usually at, at football. So um, it, it's, it's been great to, to help out with that and to see how they, they're doing and progressing at school as well as um, having fun uh, doing other things. Can you tell us a bit about players together, the role that you've played in that and, and the other players that you've been working with there? Yeah, that's uh, something that we're, we're all proud of and something that um, was well in the pipeline before we got the stick in the press. Um, but as footballers, we, we get that anyway and uh, we take that on the chin. But we had the, the idea and obviously Jordan Anderson was a big part of it, but he put it to all the captains. We had a lot of calls like I'm doing with you guys today um, where everyone had their input and we was all well happy to be on board to, to help, you know, the people that need it the most and the people that are fighting for this country and for the, for the world at the minute to, to obviously try and come to terms with, the, the, with COVID-19 and for all the people that are desperate for the help at the minute, um, we was more than happy and proud to, to donate um, as, as Premier League footballers to help, the, the, you know, the, the NHS heroes and the frontline workers and the, the, they're the heroes at the minute and um, they always are the heroes, they just don't get the plaudits but it's great to see um, the, the country and everybody coming together to show their support for them and um, hopefully their fantastic work will um you know, slow down soon so they can have their well-earned rest and we can get back to normal life. But uh, as it stands, we, we have to stay in lockdown to, to help uh, the, the NHS and the, the people that are helping this country at the minute. So we have to keep doing that. Yeah, are you particularly proud of the, the fact that you've been able to play a role in this and, and helping setting this up? Yeah, something that um, as captain, it's I've been a lot of, like I say, a lot of video calls and a lot of text messages, but that's part of my job as being a captain to, to organise that for my group of players and to help the other captains out in the Premier League, which, um, like I say, every captain was on, on board and every group of players are on board. And obviously, in the last 24 hours, England's women's football team have come on board as well, which is fantastic to see and a credit to them as well for, for grouping together and wanting to, to, to donate to, obviously, such a fantastic um, cause. Now, as the Blades captain, you've also had another job to do, I bet, which is to keep the lads engaged, have a bit of fun as well. Uh, can you tell us any stories there? Yeah, well, I've, well, I've had a few serious video calls with them about um, 
certain situations and issues, um, which we all know about. Um, but obviously, uh, an enjoyable one was about donating to um, the frontline workers in the NHS because they was all happy to do it, and uh, that was easily um, sorted. And so after that, we had we had a little bit of um, fun with each other. A um, few people's hairs looking long and beards long and hammering each other like we do in the changing room, which is something that me personally and, and I know that the lads are missing a, a lot because um, it's it's something that you can't um, quite get to grips with unless you are a footballer in that changing room together. Um, you know, it's, it's quite a unique feeling and... Um, the togetherness that we've got is uh, it was nice to see everybody on, on camera and make sure that everybody was all right because I'll be honest it's, it's it has been tough mentally and um, we're not we're not used to this and sometimes you have to get um, you have to cha- do things and change things to, to come to terms with uh, situations like this and um, make make the best of it but it's it's um, something that we've we've all been in text message which all the lads are happy and um, are doing well. They're working hard, making sure that they're prepared to, when the ball gets rolling, we're ready and hopefully they can catch a, a few teams out like we already have done this season. You do enjoy the challenge that James Coppin just set for you. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. Um, it was obviously for another fantastic cause. Um, I wasn't too keen in being just in me the pants in front of the, the, the world, basically, on Twitter as it is, but... Um, Cops is a great friend and um, he's supporting that cause and I was more than happy to do it for, for him and for the for the uh, cause and my wife was uh, not too particularly happy that I was in front of the, the world in my underpants either but she filmed it and uh, I thought I gave a good account of myself, I gave it a good go and it's pretty tricky actually, if, um, especially obviously I've got a lot more on when I'm not on camera so it's quite nerve wracking but um, that was a bit of fun as well and the, the kids had a go as well, which uh, was something different for them. Uh, Chris Wilder said that making you skipper was one of the best decisions he's made. That's what he said this week. How do you react to that? Yeah, it was um, really nice to hear, actually. Um, I, I remember to this day that the, the walk that we had um, around the uh, Bramall Lane, around the pitch at the time, uh, and he laid all the things down, what he wanted me to do. And I've tried to do them to my best of my ability and grow as a captain and as a player in the meantime. And certainly looking back on what we've achieved so far um, collectively, is I'm delighted with how it's gone. And I've been proud to, to wear it every time I've had the armband on. And, uh, you know, the boys have supported me, whoever, it, whoever it, um, the squad's been, you know, from the League One days to the Championship to, to, to the to the now, the Premier League, and um, it's a great bunch of players to to be uh, the leader for and to be responsible for, and um, I, I've loved it. Um, I've never never really thought about being a captain before in my career. I just wanted to, you know, play football, score goals, and to do it at Sheffield United was was um, a, a dream, really. But to, you don't really realise what the captain means until you put the armband on. Because, um, like I said, I had, I had the phone call off the gaffer when I was going on my holidays, what I like to be. And then I had to walk around the, around the pitch. And then obviously the, the first day, I, the first game I put it on was such a, an honour player. It was, um, and um, every time I put it on now, it's, it's the same feeling. Um, to, be, to be captain of this football club who I support is such a special feeling. And to hear that come from my manager, is, uh, it's nice to hear, definitely. I just wanted to join the lot down. The club's been posting a lot of the videos of the celebrations and the promotions and some some great goals as well. Is it, do you sort of look back and think, yeah, do you know what? You've achieved quite a lot in the last few years uh, with the club and, yeah, and where, where the club's come from. With, yeah, especially like the, the media team at the club do a great job um, with you know putting stuff out there and for the fans to engage with. And it's great for the players as well because we get photos what we've probably not seen because we were celebrating or we were at the time um, and we, we, it's impossible to see everything what goes on so there has been interviews and photos and videos and goals that it's been great to look back on and um, um, reminisce and just just to see it all really what we've achieved together is, uh, is fantastic and we just want to keep working hard and 
uh, achieving more things together. Have you thought about what might have been this weekend? It would have been FA Cup semi-final weekend. Yeah, we'd have had to beat, um, obviously, Arsenal before this. But, yeah, um, that game to come. And for whatever circumstances it's in, whether it's, you know, behind closed doors or whatever, we'll give it a right good go. And if we can get to that stage, which would be this weekend, um, you, can, you can certainly feel it anyway with, you know, the sun starting to shine. It had been at Wembley. Um, it had been great if we we could have got there, and it would have been full of our fans this weekend. It would have been some occasion, but we we, we know we've got a hurdle to get to that point before we start thinking about it. So, um, yeah, the FA Cup semi final. I remember the last time Sheffield United was in that. I was there, and obviously didn't go to, to plan, but um, it's a great day, and hopefully we can get there. Have you allowed yourself to dream about the possibility of winning a cup? As Blades captain, you know now now that where you are in the Premier League, you're in an FA Cup quarter final. It's not not a ridiculous thought, is it? No, oh, you yeah you, you do you do um, dream and we do believe and we believe that we can beat Arsenal in the quarter final. Um, no disrespect to them, they're a great team, but we've um, already beaten once this season and drawn at their place, so we fancy our chances. It'll be a very tough game, um, but we'll give it a good go and. If we can do it, then you know it'd be it'd be an amazing achievement to to run out at Wembley with a with a club and uh, hopefully try and get to the final. But you know it's tough to talk about things that um, are quite far away because uh, we've got two games to get there. So we take it one game at a time, like we always try and say. And uh, the, the tough task of beating Arsenal will be will be the first one. And, and finally, have you got a message for the fans? I think they always enjoy hearing from the skipper. Have you got a message for them during these tough times? Yeah, I think I said it at the start of this lockdown about, you know, making sure that you look after the people around you, closest to you. Obviously, that's the people in your house at the minute because we're in this lockdown. Um, keeping a smile on their faces will help you keep a smile on yours. And um, if we can look after each other in our own household, it'll be better for, for, the, for the outside world and when this, um, you know, this lockdown does end, we can set each other free and go back to normality, if you like. And um, football, you know, it's uh, it's an amazing sport and it's full of emotion. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of fans, um, a lot of our fans who can't wait to get back into Bramall Lane to to roar us on and uh, cheer them goals going in again. And uh, obviously, I've um, put them Sheffield United shirts on and be proud of the club um, again once this pandemic's over. Cheers, Billy. No problem. Cheers. Thank you. Hiya, Billy. You all right, mate? Hiya. What does the NHS right. mean to you, personally? Um, well, it's some something that um, some of my family um, are part of. So it, it means, means a lot, whether it's involved in your family or not, because they're the people that are... Um, are, the, are the ones fighting for the, for the country at the minute and trying to help save people's lives and trying to do their job that they love and they get paid for, to do, which they don't get paid enough. They don't get enough credit, but um, it's something that, yeah, we should be proud of, not just myself. Um, you know, we need the NHS and they're the people that are in, are the ones that are putting their lives at risk at the minute, their health at risk. And um, we need to make sure we support them as much as we can and um, appreciate them because they're doing amazing work at the minute, which um, they should all be very proud of themselves. You say family, is it, is it close family to you that are involved? Yeah. Um, and not just my family as well. I know friends who have got people, you know, who, who their partners are are on the front line and it's, it's a risk to, for them to bring home, but they have to do it because it's their skill, it's their profession, it's, it's what they do. And it, um, I reckon when they look back on it in years to come, they'll say, you know... Um, it was a proud moment for them, even though it's a scary time at the minute. But um, we need to be proud and um, continue giving our support for them because they're doing an amazing job at the minute, which um, hopefully that does slow down for them soon so they can have a break from it and enjoy getting uh, going back to their normal life and enjoying doing what they do. I know you're doing training at home. Each player's got their own, their own equipment to work with. But have you been given an indication about when you might return to the training ground? We've gone past that twice. Um, no, we had two weeks we said we'd be off for, which um, 
was easy. The first two weeks was, you know, quite nice to be at home um, with the family, spending quality time with the kids and and, and the wife and um, doing things in the house that probably I wouldn't usually do. Um, but then it, it, I'll not be, I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, it's there's days where it is tough mentally because um, the kids are getting restless and you're probably doing your wife's head in and she's probably doing your head in, but um, you just got to make sure that, you know, it's, this ain't going to last forever and there's people out there who are doing amazing things for us and we're the lucky ones, if you like, at the minute, being able to be in safe surroundings in our own homes to, to just basically occupy each other and wait until this, um, obviously, COVID-19 disappears and we can continue with normal life. Because mid-May has been, been talked about as a time that potentially you could get back training again together. Is that something that you're working towards? Is that a date that you're working towards? Yeah, I think that's realistic, yeah. Hopefully, um, that's the date that we're going to be back in training as a group. Um, like I said, we've had, we had two weeks at the start and then we got told another two weeks, which we are now coming to. So, um, But then we've heard mid-May, which... I think is realistic. Um, we've seen the, the curve starting to flatten, I believe. Um, I've tried not to um, get too downhearted with all the news and stuff because it's hard to take all in, but I'm pretty sure I saw it starting to flatten out. So hopefully we can get to the bottom of this, um, like I said, this COVID-19 and we can see the curve starting to go down and get this um, pandemic to, to put to bed and hopefully... You know, we can kind of continue, like I say, with with normal life. I think if the season is going to be finished, it will be behind closed doors, won't it? How do you yeah. feel about that? Uh, obviously, you want football's about the fans for me. Um, scoring the goals and the emotion is you get it from the atmosphere of the stadium. Um, it will be weird, but it's going to be the same for both sides who are playing at the time. So you need to adapt quickly to it. Um, I'm sure the gaffer will struggle not to swear as much because you're going to hear it a lot clearer now without the fans. But um, the players are obviously going to have a responsibility to make sure that they um, put a good account of themselves on the pitch because, you know, um, a lot of people are going to be watching that game and um, behind the TV screens. But we're still going to have to set a good example and try and express ourselves with our talents and hopefully put smiles on people's faces while um, we're playing and It'll be, it'll be a lot better playing behind closed doors than not playing at all, that's for sure. And it certainly have a, a big impact on the national mood, don't you think? Getting sport back. Yeah, not just football. Uh, so like you said, sport all round. Um, yeah, it is just a game. You know, football, basketball, rugby, golf, whatever, tennis. Um, but they make so many people happy. They put so much uh, smiles on people's faces. And... Um, the people who are doing the sport, it gives you such a um, proud feeling. And, you know, like, like I think a lot of people are, and, are now doing, you know, with this hour exercise that you're allowed to do, um, a lot of people are doing it and seeing what it can do for, for your mind, not just as your health. Um, it gives you a release and uh, makes you feel good about yourself. And um, it obviously puts your body in good shape as well. Cheers, Billy. Thanks, man. No Cheers.